Okay. Hello and welcome back to the Willie Morgan Show with Manchester United <laughs> icon Willie Morgan. We discuss many things on the show as always. Today we're going to cover Manchester United, Burnley, Bolton with lots of other things in between. Willie, how are you? I'm very well. Uh, it's been a nice week. The weather's been not too bad here. In fact, today it was supposed to rain all week. But uh, yesterday I was out golfing. I was out golfing today. I've just come in. Uh, it's been beautiful, the, the weather here. So I've been very fortunate. We've been a little bit busy. Uh, my grandson moved into a new home. So a bit traumatic. That's done. And uh, we've got tomorrow John McLaughlin, who you've heard me mention before, John, who is with the Hilton mob. We're celebrating his birthday tomorrow. Oh. Uh, he, he's from, John from Coast Norton. So anybody listening from Coast Norton, there's two of you. Um, the, so we're off to La Familia, my favourite restaurant, uh, Pilioni, the, the Italian friend that owns it. So we're going there tomorrow night uh, for a bite to eat. Uh, I've got a new relative. At this age, at my age, all of a sudden, uh, she's come today. She got in touch, some DNA or whatever. So, and she, she's called Hazel Stewart. And she writes children's books, which is quite amazing. Anyway, so literally Kay's been, obviously, you, you know, my skills with the internet. <laughs> Kay's been communicating with her on my behalf. And of course, you know, Bolton, fantastic. Delighted for them, obviously. Delighted that Burnley stayed up. Great result the other night. And Steve Bruce, you know, he's, he's had such a hard time up there. And he's brilliant. They're up as well. So all, it's all good. It's all good. Especially uh, with Newcastle beating Leicester in the traitor. So... <laughs> um, I believe they're over, you know, it's quite funny. I've just come off the golf course and I believe Leicester City are all over it. The golf at Mir today, to stay in there in the hotel at the Mir. So quite, quite funny, really. So, so yes, it's been, you know, and also on Friday. Now, listen, all you listeners and you viewers, it's called the horse that I've got a little interest in, not a lot. It's called Say What You Want. And I believe it's running at Leopardstown on Friday. So don't put too much on. But they tell me it's got a chance. So I might have a five at each way and it'll see. Well, uh, well fingers it. crossed. That's really it. You know, it's not been, it's uh, been, it's just been nice, as usual. It's been, it has been, well, you say it's been nice down there. I mean, obviously based in Scotland, it's been, it's been pretty rubbishy weather for the last wee while, but it's, it's perking up th this evening, which is which is nice. And, and one of the first things I want to get your opinion on this week, Willie, is a, a tweet you put out at the weekend about Manchester City. You said they are not over the line yet. Could they be caught? Well, you know what I said, the last part, if we're to beat Leeds, it's been a completely different story. Completely different story. You know, there's been nothing in it. And believe me, when you're on that downward, when you start getting beat, and again, you, you can't be caught now. I think it's it's too late. You never know, though, in football. You know, it's a crazy, crazy game. And also, Man City, you know, twice now, the last, what, last two weeks, Chelsea beat them twice. What's the odds in the European Cup final? What's the odds, eh? I tell you, Man City won't be looking forward to it, I can assure you, because psychologically, Chelsea will be up for it. They can't wait. I tell you right now, they cannot wait for the 29th. So uh, it's a, a mixed bag for me. You know, I've got great friends. Um, Pops and Nifty Ahmed, the big, man, you know, Goods' his brothers, my pal Goods, who I play golf with. Um, they're big Man City fans. And my other great friend who's in Tenerife, Craig Stanton, he's a massive Chelsea fan. So I'm going to sit in the pens. Whoever wins is a, is, is a, is a bonus for some of my friends. So. 
We'll see what happens. Just on Manchester United, there's been a lot of fire and fury about the fact United are going to be playing five games within 17 days. Do you have any sympathy? What, on the pitches they're playing on? If they were playing on the mud that we played in, yeah, maybe. Not on these pitches. You could play every day. I mean, these guys are fit, obviously. Uh, you play every day. Easy, easy. God, I wish Crown and McCallion and me and Law and Bessie, they're all playing now, would be pretty great. Playing on these pitches is so easy. It's a different world. So, nah, they, and the way they play, I mean, they stand still all the time and go backwards. So, uh, they don't take too much energy out of themselves. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. As we speak, United have made 10 changes for their game against Leicester and they'll obviously be playing Liverpool in two days' time. If you were the manager, would you be prioritising that Liverpool game over this one tonight? If I was the manager, I'd be playing the best 11 that I've got in my books every game. No matter if you're playing seven, seven games in one week, it'd be the best team I can put out. What I think is my best team. That's who we'll be playing. I don't make changes for changes' sake. No. Uh, it, he should play his best team. I think it's unfair to other teams who may be in a relegation or, or you know, trying to get a Champions League place. It's unfair on them for people to put out weakened teams. You couldn't do it in the old days. I mean, they, they would find you. Now it, it's all changed. I mean, the game's changed anyway. That's a coach's... Uh, I said, coach's idea. Amanda wouldn't do that. You can imagine Matt Busby making nine changes for a match because you've got another match to it. Rubbish. So, yeah, you do what you do. I think you still beat them anyway. Uh, keep them quiet. They're a bunch of nothing anyway, Leicester, so I'm not worried about them. Liverpool definitely want to beat them. Definitely want to beat them. So... We'll see. I think we'll win both the games. It was a great result the other night against Villa. You know, it's a, it's a good win again. And it just gives you confidence. You know, I keep saying that football is not the brightest people on the planet. And they, 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 luck, they're always looking for a bit of good luck. And we're on a little bit of a good run, and it's nice. It's good for Ollie. It's brilliant. Keep people off his back for a while. Well, obviously the club are in the, the Europa League final where they will play Villarreal um, and you've mentioned the fact that it definitely will keep any critics off his back. How important is that trophy to him personally as a manager because he's never won a major honour as a manager? Well, he's still, he's still a young lad, you know. Uh, I think we'll win. I, I don't think there's any doubt we'll beat, beat Villarreal. Um and I, the biggest achievement for me, though, is not when the Europe of whatever it is you win, it doesn't matter, it's still a bonus. Finishing second, and maybe, maybe, maybe win the week, maybe, <laughs> can we keep our fingers crossed? But to finish second is a massive achievement with, the, with what he's got. I think it's incredible what he's done. I mean, look at what he's done. It's fantastic. It really is quite fantastic. So now I'm looking forward to next season. I still hope he gets rid of, you know, some of the players that shouldn't be there anyway. Um, but even with those, he's, he's done amazing. I think he's a good guy. Um, a coach, I never see him on the touchline shouting, screaming, thing in. He's more like an old time manager. You know, the thing is he could play himself. So he knows what he's looking for. He knows what he's looking for. But most of these people couldn't play. They just get a coaching badge. Uh, so uh, I think it's all good. Looking forward, I think it's all good. Speaking of managers, United beat Roma on the way to the Europa League final. The last show we recorded, we talked about Jose Mourinho being sacked by Tottenham. We're recording only two weeks later and he's got a new job. He'll be the Roma manager next season. Are you surprised that a club's taken him on so quickly after being sacked by Spurs? You know, it's the only business where you get 
sacked and get, get another job. So we're somebody looking for someone. It is, it's crazy. What other business? Anyone in business, if they fail, they're finished. Football is a merry-go-round. You know, you go from here. It, it's, it's weird. It's weird. No, there's always a job for, for managers. Um, it's just the way it is. Well, they're not managers, coaches. Yeah, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll make Roma worse than they are. Don't worry about that. Just on um, United for next season, you talked about finishing second. Look what looks like second this year. Um, they definitely will want to challenge next year to win the title. There's been a lot of talk as to whether they should sign a striker or a right winger. They've been linked with Harry Kane as a striker. Would you sign him over a winger? No, I sign a winger. I sign a winger all day long. We can get someone who can go past the fullback and provide ammunition into the box. No, 100% winger, if he, if he can play. Um, I, I don't know who it is. The, I've not seen the, uh, any of the wingers. I've not seen any winger that can, can do that at the moment. There's very, very few in the game. Coaches have destroyed wingers. You know, 4-4-2, four, 4-5-1, four, 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 it's crazy. They've destroyed attacking play. And if you can find a winger, boy, I'd be delighted. I'll sign him tomorrow. He'd be in my team, I can assure you. Harry Kane, yeah, Harry Kane's a goal scorer. He's a proven goal scorer. Who would want Harry Kane in your team? Why don't we sign both? Well, why, why don't they sign them both? I agree. I think they've got, they've, got, they've got to show ambition and they've got to get the checkbook out, surely. Well, they've shown a bit, you know, we spoke about this on the last show. As much as, yeah, I don't like the Glazers on Manchester United. I think it's crazy. But they put a billion pounds up for players. You've got to give them credit. It's not lack of money that's caused this problem. It's lack of proper management that's caused the problem. Managers buying rubbish, absolute rubbish. And that's... So it's not because they haven't spent money. You know, it's all right, Spend. Are you going to get what you're paying for? How many players at the moment? You know, you have to look at what we've bought. 90 million for Maguire. My God. It, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So it's not, it's not just the money. It's finding the right players. And I say, I keep saying, and get rid of the stuff a lot of the stuff that we've got. I mean, they, their feet wouldn't touch the ground. If I was a manager, they'd been gone by now anyway. So, it, there's nothing to beat, though. Look at City at the moment. Last few home games, Leeds beat them. Beat the other day again by Chelsea at home. They're not great. They're certainly not great. They've got it. They've, for the want of a better word, They've got a good manager. I like, you know, he's, he's a good manager. Um, but they're not great. I don't think they'll win the league next year. I don't think City will, they won't win it next year. Uh, can we win it? Well, it depends who, who he gets rid of. And hopefully bring, bring in a couple more. It's nice that Cavani's staying for another year. I think that is, you know, a good player. Uh, but with a winger providing ammunition for him, he'd be even better. So I hope, I hope he signs a winger. Keep your fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, indeed, it would be. I put up, by the way, Callum. <laughs> no, I did. I just didn't know if he was going to ring or not. So I cleaned my boots just in case. But uh, um, we were chatting about that the other day. It's quite funny. Do you think you could play in there? Yeah, of course I could. I just need a month's training and I could, you know, go past any fullback in the world because they can't defend. It'd be easy. I'm playing on these pitches. I think, uh, like, I'm going to get Crane back and playing as well. We'll get Paddy out in one of these pitches. He would love playing on that. Andrew McIog, they'd be, be brilliant. So, no, but we get a winger. I think if we get a good winger, I don't know where they are. I don't know where he is. Hopefully there is one out there that they've seen 
um, right or left, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just someone who will be wide, go to the byline and get crosses in. So, can only hope. But I think we'll challenge next year. There's nothing to beat. There's nothing to beat. Who else is going to challenge? Chelsea? Yeah, they're on a little bit of a, a, a nice run because they've got a new manager. That'll only last so long. That'll only last so long. Uh, I mean, City are always going to be there or thereabouts. But you look at the start they made this year. They could have got relegated halfway through the season. So you just don't know. There's nothing to beat. It, there really is nothing to beat. It's getting... Uh, you need you need a good finisher. Um, you need a good defence. So I hope I hope we stay where we are. I know a little bit of improvement next year. We'll win the league. Would that be wonderful? That'd be wonderful. Absolutely, it would be wonderful. And and, and yeah. United fans are desperate Burnley, for it to happen. Burnley second. We'll have Burnley second in the league. Would be fine. That'd be nice as well. So. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, the fans have got to be delighted with what they've done this year. Absolutely delighted. I mean, we'll win the Europa Cup. Second, if not first, mm, but second in the league is fantastic. It is really, really fantastic. So keep our fingers crossed. Fingers crossed indeed. And I want to come back to someone you mentioned at the, the start of the show and Steve Bruce. He's kept Newcastle United up. It's a club that has a lot of problems that the fans hate the owner and the owner is, is very open that he wants to sell. Do you think Steve Bruce has come in for a lot of unfair criticism? Because the fans, for whatever reason, just don't seem to personally like him. The fan, I, I don't know why they don't like him. You know something? He was a great player. He was a great centre half. I know we spoke about him last time as well. The fight he didn't get cut. It was ridiculous. You had that talking donkey, Tony Adams, getting all the caps. And I tell you, he wasn't in the same league as Steve Bruce. He's a very, very nice guy. And he's a good manager. He's a good manager. You know, he's always been in there with struggling teams. But he's done a fantastic job to keep them up this year. Absolutely fantastic. And I don't know how long he'll take the abuse. Uh, he, he's just too nice a guy. Um, I wish him, obviously, wish him all the success. And, you know, they got no money. Ashley, you don't want to spend any money. He wants to keep all his money. And he's made it it's well known that he's trying to get out. Well, that doesn't exactly give the fans confidence and the team confidence and the manager confidence, does it? Um, it sadly football has been dominated with money the last few years just all about making money uh, and not concentrating on providing entertainment for the home fans um, we'll see at least he's safe uh, and as I said before Burnley's safe and Sean Dyke amazing what he's done there Absolutely brilliant. And he, he's very similar to Steve Bruce. You know, similar type of person, similar, you know. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's very satisfying for me to see them both. And, and of course, as you said, <laughs> Bolton coming up. It's fabulous. It's absolutely fabulous. So it's a happy, it's a happy place at the moment. Everything's happy at the moment. It certainly is. And that leads us on perfectly to our... Listeners' questions. George Nuttall has got in touch to ask, when do you think the Glazers will sell Manchester United? Is now the time for them to go? No, the time was about five years ago, George. They should have, they should have sold it five years ago and got out of there. They're, they're faceless people. They, they've got nothing to do with football. They have... It, it's, sadly, though, they're not on their own. You know, there's so many clubs owned by faceless people who are just in it for money. Nothing else. They don't care. Yeah, they want us to win because they make more money. They don't want us to win so that the fans will be happy. They just want to make more money. 
And I hope they sell it. And as I said before, I don't know whether City of Manchester or football get the supporters all over the world to chip in. I'd, I'd certainly chip in and buy the club ourselves and get a little committee to run it. It'd be great. Why is it owned by somebody in America? It's ridiculous. So hopefully they'll sell it soon, George. And in terms of the, the Glazers, one of the other things that I found, I don't know if you found it interesting, I personally did, they haven't communicated with fans in the 16 years that they've, they've owned the club, but they've sent out two letters in the last two weeks, um, which is, again, unheard of from, from their point of view. And Joel Glazer has said he will meet with fans virtually at a fans forum. What's your reaction to that? Uh, does he know what colour we play in? That's number one. Would he, would he recognise a Manchester United fan? Who knows? I, uh, it, you're too little, too late. You know, it's because they're in trouble. And yeah, of course, you're going to look for a way out. But it, it, if it's a step forward, yeah, yeah, great. You know, I watched the, the thing, uh, the demonstration, and, you know, it's sad. I... I believe in what they're trying to do, the fans, and I told you, I'd be one of them, I'd go and demonstrate, but not violence. What they did was wrong. I mean, I love them, I love the fans, but what they did was wrong. It was crazy. You know, have a little bit of decorum and be, they're classy, be classy. They didn't need, what they did was complete and utterly wrong. Um, and yeah, by all, demonstrate by all means, but peaceful. Do it properly. And I think this meeting might be a step forward. I hope I hope so anyway. As I said, it, it's all for the future. And there's, we're not that far away from success. We're not that far away. But I said, the one thing you cannot blame the Glazers for is it, don't say they didn't, they've not put money for the money. They have. They put the money up for, for every manager to buy the players that he wanted. They just bought rubbish, absolutely diabolical. Um, the buys, oh, but a billion pound. Well, I'd settle for half of that at the moment, Callum. That would be all right. Just keep me going, keep me on the golf course for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, step in the right direction. Simon Holden's question is something we've covered a wee bit in the show. He's, he's asking you about Sean Dyche. What are your thoughts on him? He's spent, um, he's got a net spend of £10 million in five seasons of keeping them in the league. He's only spent £1 million this season. They will now play in the Premier League for the sixth consecutive season um, for the first time in many decades. In terms of Sean Dyche, Willie, do you think he could go on and manage a quote-unquote top club like a United, like one of the, the so-called big six? Well, of course, so-called big six. There are no so-called big six. It's absolute garbage. Burnley, don't forget when I was at Burnley. Simon, uh, Simon's actually a relative of mine. Okay? Uh, and I know he's a big Burnley fan. And his, and his dad, Tom, big Burnley fan. Uh, Simon, it's, uh, I think, Sean Dyke has been great. Uh, could he manage? Yes, he could manage anywhere. But what he's doing, where he is, stick to what you've got. You just have to go and look any higher. You know, it just take. He's done great at Burnley, and every success at Burnley is as much as Man City winning the league. Just keeping Burnley in the first division, keeping the fans happy. No money. Incredible. Why don't the Glazers sell Man United and buy Burnley and give them a billion pound to spend? And watch what Sean Dyke would do with that. You know, it, it's easy. With, but even with money, look at the state we're in, Simon, with money. A billion pound and we got nothing. There's, no, there's very little difference between Burnley and Man United at the moment. Very little difference. So, um, no, he, he's... He could manage anywhere, and I think what he's, what he's done is, is fantastic. Are you surprised a club like Celtic haven't approached them? 
I'm surprised Celtic haven't approached Stevie Wonder because it'd be better than what we've had. Dear, oh dear. Don't get me on that because that, you know, it's been a good week. <laughs> it's make me happy. <laughs> you know, for all the clubs I've played, and I love all the clubs I've played with, I still love them. I'm a Celtic fan, I was a Celtic fan as a kid, and it never goes away. And it's heartbreaking. You know, that result there uh, last week, my God, heartbreaking. But no, Sean Dyke wouldn't want to go to Scotland. He's in the Premier League in England. And with the greatest of respect to the Scottish Premier, it's not in the same world as the English League. It's not in the same world. So no, it'd be a, it'd be a step down to go to manage there when you can manage in the Premier League here. Maybe if you got the sack, yeah. Or like I said the last time, why don't you and I take the Celtic job? Right? Give you something to do, something proper to do, Callum. <laughs> well, just just on that, I mean, it looks as if Celtic are going to hire a new manager um, after almost 80 days since Neil Lennon left. Eddie Howe is expected to be named uh, next week, former Bournemouth manager. Do you think he's a good choice for Celtic? Yeah, I think, you know, anyone coming out of the English league will be good. Will be good. You know, they, they know what they're looking for. I, you know, my thoughts on, I don't, I don't know a lot about Eddie Howe, um, but you know, my thoughts on coaches, they're all the same. You know, some might have a better, uh, nicer temperament than the other one, but they're all the same. They all preach from the same book. It's the same stuff. Uh, so it doesn't matter who you point, it's whether he's got a little bit extra, where he can motivate. See, Guardiola motivates people who want to play for him. Even though he's a coach, he motivates people. And the same with the guy at Liverpool. He, he, you know, he, he did a great job last year. What he did last year, it was just him, just him. He's got a bunch of rubbish, but his motivation was infectious. Uh, and I think Ollie, quieter, much quieter, but I think he's infectious and I think people want to play for him. And that's why we're doing so well. Not because we're a great team, but because they want to play for him. And it's the same in the old days. You know, there were loads of great managers, but the ones that you wanted to just do that bit extra for were the ones who were successful. You know, your Busby's, Shankly's, Bill Nichols, you know, all the great managers, Joe Mercer. The players wanted to play for them. And it's the same now. It's still the same, even though it's a different type of football, it's still the same. So, uh, and I think Sean Dyke, the players want to play for him. Players are there to play for him, and that's why he is doing what he's doing. A lot of people expected uh, Celtic to go for Roy Keane if they didn't go for Eddie Howe. Do you think Roy Keane would be able to manage modern day players? Um, because he's been, he's obviously known, he's been a very passionate guy and quite aggressive at times as well. Do you think he would be able to manage in the game now? Without a doubt, he could play, you know, he's a good player. You know what he's looking for, and you know what he's looking for, by the way. He'll, he'll, he won't leave any stone unturned, so you know what's expected of you. No, I, I, I think Roy Keane would be very good. I'd like him as a manager, and I, I think he'd be very successful. I think he'd be picking players to play in positions and not picking a squad of all the same sideways, backwards, anywhere, bar forwards. Uh, no, I think Roy Keane would be a good manager. So if you're listening, Roy, don't forget Callum and I. We'll come up with you. You, you always need a strong backroom, so we, we'll happily go with you, Roy. Well, we're not going to be a backroom. We'll be up front with them. What are you talking about, backroom? Come on, behave yourself. <laughs> be up front with them. So, no, I think Roy would be great. I like, I... Uh, you know, he's honest, tells the truth. He doesn't try to, you know, you're watching something, he doesn't try to tell you what you're not watching. He tells the truth. 
And I, I rate that. I rate him very, very highly. I think he's brilliant on the TV. I think he's brilliant. So, and I, you know, I don't know the lad all these years and he lives in Manchester, never met. Uh, but I do like what he says. And I rate, I rate Roy Keane. The last question we've got takes us completely away from football. We've talked about United, we've talked about Burnley, Bolton, uh, different players and experiences. Last one's from Otterman, our good friend, Otterman62 on Twitter. What have you been doing to get you through the lockdowns apart from this show? Any hobbies or TV shows that have really helped you? Uh, <laughs> Otterman, <laughs> apart from golf, um, which I've still been able to swing a club through all these dark times. I've watched more shows on Netflix, mainly, I don't know, Mediterranean cruising or whatever, under, under, <laughs> whatever. It's, well, I've watched more rubbish, I think, than I've ever watched in my life. So um, it's, it's like a breath of fresh air now that we're coming out of it. It's not gone though, you know, it's not gone, but it is a breath of fresh air uh, to be able to see people again and have people round. So I know Krem's waiting to come round for dinner again. I'm in Noreen, so that's all I've been doing. And in the garden, working in the garden. My wife, you know, I'm the labourer. So I do all the labour in Ottoman in the garden. So other than that, you know, just survival. I mean, I feel sorry for the people. They're stuck in a flat with kids and it must be heartbreaking. My heart does go out to them. It must have been so, so hard. So for them, more than somebody like me, it's a little bit easier for me, you know, the garden and the thing to go into. Um, I think it's great for the country as a whole and for all the people who don't have the space at home and need to go out. So for them, it's wonderful. And I hope they all enjoy the coming months. I think it's going to be nice. Oh, we need some good weather. If the weather stays good, Callum, it'll be it'll be great for people. It'll make a it be refreshing. It'll just be great for people. So, as always, we uh, wish everyone all the best and keep safe. Absolutely, and I think that's a really positive way to to end the show in the sense that. Well, it has been tough for so many people, but as you say, hopefully we're starting to slowly but surely come out of this situation now, get some good weather, enjoy the summer, and hopefully, hopefully get fans back in stadiums next year and, and get back to watching the teams we love. Uh, that'd be great. And it looks like it's going to happen. Just keep your fingers crossed. It looks like it's going to happen. So we'll just keep keep moving on. Uh, it just be great to, to go and rent somebody's house and have some dinner. <laughs> You know, it's weird when you wake up and watch the telly again, put the telly on again, put the telly on again. So it's, uh, it, it's something to look forward to. Uh, and that's all we can, that's all we can do. It's just, I say for all the, the people who has been really difficult, um, I'm, I'm delighted for them. Just before we go, Willie, any last messages for the listeners? Well, as always, uh, may your God go with you, wherever it is, and just be happy if you can. Um, and pray for a bit of good weather. That's all we can do. That's that. I'll take care. That's the main thing. Uh, the, the good weather, that's something we can certainly all get behind. And until next time, thank you for uh, your support, everyone. Remember, you can get your questions in uh, to the show and Willie will always answer a question, whether it's on gardening, whether it's on Manchester United. You name a question, he will answer it. Yeah, anything at all. Anything at all.